are you coming out or not? One night in 1997, a struggling sitcom did the unthinkable. I'm gay. <laughs> Ellen's coming out episode was a massive TV milestone. I heard 42 million people watch. Yeah. The first openly gay lead character on a primetime sitcom, it opened the door for countless shows that followed. We all knew something huge had just happened. But not everyone was happy about it. I'm fed up with lesbianism being treated as a normal lifestyle. And behind the scenes, some of Ellen's biggest battles were with the executives in charge of the network. It became a program about a lead character who was gay every single week. And I just think that was too much for people. It just felt so degrading. And that was only the start of her troubles. I worked for 20 years to get to where I was, and suddenly everything was wiped out. They ran everybody out of the studio because it was a bomb threat. I mean, it was just your worst nightmare. This is the story of the most controversial coming out in television history, and the fallout that changed TV forever. Was this funny enough for you? One of the first hints at what was coming came in the spring of 1996 on a soundstage at Warner Brothers. Actor Patrick Bristow was getting ready to shoot a scene when someone sat down on a couch next to him and whispered, I'm thinking of doing what you did. He looked over, and it was Ellen DeGeneres. At the time, Ellen was the star of a sitcom, which was also named Ellen, and both had a problem. Ellen the person was struggling with a secret that she'd kept hidden for years, and Ellen the sitcom had been struggling to find an audience for years. The show had started in 1994 in a very different form. In its first season, it was a buddy ensemble called These Friends of Mine, and Ellen was just one member of the cast. Ratings were just so-so, and viewers kept confusing it with another show that had just launched called Friends. So the next season, they got rid of the Friends of Mine part, changed the name to Ellen, and made her the main character. That still didn't help, so the next season, they changed the cast again, keeping the Ellen character and making her more of a reflection of who Ellen DeGeneres was in real life. That still didn't work, and in fact, it might have made things worse. Every year that we went back, we were still looking for what the show was. Nobody could figure out what it was. Sometimes the show was a slapsticky sitcom like I Love Lucy. Sometimes it was a workplace comedy like The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Sometimes it was a friends in an apartment show like Seinfeld. It was a horrible show to write for because you had to reinvent the show every week. Coming up with story after story about her foot getting caught in the bucket. Behind the scenes, Many of the writers felt that the problem was that the show had no clear point of view, nothing to set it apart. And what was most frustrating was that they all knew there was one thing they could have done to set it apart. Make the Ellen character gay. And sometimes, you know, at two in the morning, you'd be saying, why doesn't she just come out? <laughs> That'd be a lot so easier, right. easier. Ellen the comedian had been out to friends and family her whole adult life. In fact, one of her first pieces of comedy was based on an experience with a girlfriend and a terrible tragedy. My girlfriend had just been killed in a car accident and um, I just didn't understand life. So I thought, what, what if we could just pick up the phone and call up God and ask these questions that we don't understand, what that conversation would be like. So she wrote a sketch where she did just that. Yeah, hi, God, it's Ellen. <laughs> Ellen, DeGeneres. Audiences responded well to the sketch, and she was invited to do it on Carson. Yeah, listen, if you weren't too bit, sure, hold on. <laughs> Somebody's at the gate. <laughs> At the end of her performance, Johnny invited her over to sit next to him, a gesture he reserved for his favorite performers, and one he had never extended to a woman before. Yeah, I wish you would. Will you come back with us soon? I would love to. Okay, you got an in open invitation. Oh, thank you. Okay, Ellen. From there, her career really started taking off. Of course, being queer was seen as a career ender at the time, so she had to remain closeted to the public and keep up a heterosexual pretense. I date a lot of men. Not a lot, that's trampy, but I date men. When the sitcom started in 1994, they talked about making her character gay, but it seemed impossible. At the time, homosexuality was still considered pretty taboo, or worse. It was acceptable grounds to fire someone from their job, to evict them from their home, deny them a student loan. On TV, queer characters were often highly controversial. The same year that These Friends of Mine debuted, Roseanne featured a same-sex kiss that caused such an outrage behind the scenes that the show was nearly canceled. You can check out my video about Roseanne for more about that. On Fox, Melrose Place filmed a gay kiss, but the network made them insert a cutaway so the audience couldn't see it. And five years before that, the show 30-something showed two gay men just sitting next to each other in bed, and so many advertisers fled that the scene cost the network $1.5 million. Ellen herself had good reason to be nervous about coming out. 
She'd had a rough experience when her father and stepmother found out that she was gay many years earlier. They asked me to move out of the house after that. So that's why it seemed so risky for her to come out, either on the show or in real life. The furthest the sitcom seemed able to go was adding a gay side character named Peter, who's played by out actor Patrick Bristow. Welcome to adult ballet. In season three, they gave Peter a partner named Barrett. Cornucopia, pumpkin terrine. Am I sensing Martha's autumn, autumn bounty, bounty dinner? dinner. <laughs> and that was great, but it didn't help with the show's main problem, that it wasn't clear to anybody what it was about. And as the show reached the middle of season three, Ellen was rethinking some things. I started realizing uh, what a huge source of pain that was for me to constantly worry about being truthful. In real life, she had recently started therapy, and she was coming to realize just how much it hurt to be in the closet. I had this secret that I worried about all the time. In the spring of 96, she decided she couldn't take it anymore. I woke up and said, I'm coming out. But she knew this was going to be tough. First, there was a chance that many people would react the way that her father and stepmother had so many years ago. To be 37 years old and be feeling this sense of shame and that nobody would like me if, if they found out that I was gay, that's a, it's a pretty emotional thing to, to, you know, to expose yourself to. But her mind was made up. As season three came to an end, she asked the show's crew to come to a meeting at her house. They knew that whatever she was about to tell them was going to be huge, because she was usually so private that until that point, her home address had been kept secret from most of her coworkers. It was there that she announced her plan. I finally decided I would come out, and it just made sense for the character to come out at the same time. Everyone was excited, but also skeptical that they'd actually be allowed to do it. Probably a few of us thought this will never happen in a million years, but this is a fun party, and it's a great idea, and the studio will quickly say no. So as they headed into the summer of 1996, the plan was to start season four with a few episodes that hinted at the Ellen character being gay, and then to have her come out sometime around November. Then they'd spend most of season four showing her adjusting to being out, finding happiness, and then that would be the final season of the show. Pretty much none of that went according to plan. The first problem is that news of what they were planning started to leak. By the middle of the summer, pretty much the whole entertainment industry had heard whispers about what was going on. And then it wasn't long before rumors started to spread to the public. It was the worst kept secret in television. ABC refused to comment on the rumors, which only inflamed them and filled gossip columns for weeks. Groups like GLAAD were delighted to hear that Primetime might get its first openly gay lead character, but conservatives were furious. I'm fed up with lesbianism being treated as a normal lifestyle. She's an attractive woman. You know, if she hadn't told you she was lesbian, you'd say she could be in a Miss America contest. Meanwhile, Entertainment Weekly commissioned a survey that found that nearly a quarter of Americans would be personally offended if Ellen came out. And nearly half thought kids shouldn't be allowed to watch the show if she was gay. If she chooses to live that way, that's her business. But we don't want her dumping that into the hearts and minds of the kids of America. This was all extremely stressful for Ellen, especially because ABC still hadn't approved the coming out storyline, so she couldn't confirm or deny anything. She just had to watch everyone gossiping about her. Imagine the most difficult and personal decision you have ever had to make in your life becoming the hot topic of debate in newspapers, magazines, and television. In an unfortunate bit of timing, Ellen happened to have a comedy album coming out that summer and was booked on a big publicity tour. But now, all that any interviewer wanted to talk about was those rumors, which she couldn't address. So instead, she would deflect with jokes. I think mm -hmm. what, what happened is we were talking about adding a character to the show, mm -hmm. and his name was going to be Les Bien. And um, <laughs> we do find out that the, ca the character is Lebanese. And, um, <laughs> Lebanese. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'm Lebanese. You could be Lebanese. I could be Lebanese myself. I didn't know yeah. that. You know, sometimes that's, that's sad, because I pick up sometimes that you might be Lebanese. Yeah. Yeah. Things got even more tense that fall, when season four started. Every time the writers thought they could have her come out, ABC told them it wasn't the right time. There was an investor meeting that week, or it was sweeps week, or there was already a big episode planned for some other show. The timing was particularly awkward for ABC's parent company, Disney, which had just opened a new ride at Epcot called Ellen's Energy Adventure, complete with an animatronic Ellen robot. So with ABC and Disney telling them to wait, all the show's writers could do was drop hints. I feel pretty, I'm so pretty, I feel pretty and witty and 
Hey! <laughs> and more hints. This could be you. Walking up to your new home. Oh, I love this part. It's like a puppet show of your life. And here's your husband coming home from work. Oh, I think that puppet's in the wrong show. And more hints. Ellie, where are you? I was in the closet. <laughs> the plan was to have her come out in November, but... It just, we never got the okay. It just kept getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. But while ABC execs could stop Ellen the character from coming out, they couldn't stop Ellen the person. In early 1997, she confirmed that she was gay, coming out in an interview with Time Magazine. She also revealed that she'd met someone, an actress named Anne Haish. I don't think it was immediately a sexual attraction. I think it was just, wow, you are the most incredible person I've ever met and I want to be with you. But not everybody was happy for them. I just have a problem with it biblically, I think. Uh, I think God says it's wrong, it's in God's word, it's sin. And it got worse a few weeks later. The two attended the White House Correspondents' Dinner and were photographed with their arms around each other while talking to Bill Clinton. Conservatives were furious and accused them of destroying the dignity of the event. We started seeing these pictures everywhere and how disrespectful we were to, to be affectionate in front of the public. She had her arm around me. This wasn't outrage about anything that had appeared on TV. It was just the sight of a same-sex couple that angered people. And it was a sign of just how divisive coming out was going to be. Meanwhile, ABC executives kept trying to talk them out of making the character gay, suggesting other ways to mix things up. He said, we've got to get Ellen to care about somebody. We need to get her a boyfriend. And the people in the room said, well, you know, she's gay. He said, well, then get her a puppy. During the filming of one episode early in the season, Ellen ad-libbed a joke about being gay. As soon as she said it, the studio audience went nuts. But no one has ever seen that clip because ABC reps were there to monitor the taping and they immediately swooped in to confiscate the tapes. That's how worried they were about allowing anything gay to air. But finally, after a lot of pushing, ABC gave them the green light to tape the episode, what the writers were now calling the puppy episode. One of the first people cast was Oprah Winfrey. According to some accounts, Ellen called her. I called you and asked if you would do this. And, uh, and I was really shocked that you said yes. And according to others, Oprah called them. One of my assistants comes in and says, someone claiming to be Oprah Winfrey is on the phone. So what is the truth? But however it happened, this was a big get. Oprah was one of the most trusted personalities in America, and it was a big deal for her to lend credibility to the episode with her presence. I so believed in your truth, and I so wanted to support you. And Oprah actually had a long history of tackling queer issues on her show. Starting in the 80s, hers was one of the first talk shows to acknowledge National Coming Out Day. In 1988, we had an audience full of gay people come out to the world. Difficult. Back then, that was a big deal. My name is Michael Kaplan. Hello, America. I'm gay. And just a few months before the puppy episode, Oprah had prodded Nathan Lane to have a coming out moment of his own when he was on her show to promote The Birdcage. Were well, you afraid director. of taking that role and being like typecast and people forever saying, are you, are you not, is he, is he, honey, I don't know. Um. Nathan, who was closeted at the time, later said that it was terrifying for him. Fortunately, Robin Williams was there to swoop in and change the subject. Um. <laughs> Girl, you changed just in the middle of that sentence. <laughs> And for more about that whole incident, you can check out my video about the birdcage. So now, deprived of a coming out moment with Nathan, Oprah was about to get one with Ellen. And this was also an exciting opportunity for another actress, Laura Dern. She was already a well-known film star for movies like Mask and Jurassic Park, and Ellen approached her at a party about appearing in the episode. She happily said yes, but as soon as people found out that Laura was involved, they started warning her that it would kill her career. That I started getting calls, Did friends and colleagues, even gay friends and colleagues saying, are you sure you want to do that? That seems scary. Those people had good reason to be nervous. Conservatives had continued to whip their followers into a fury over the episode, and it hadn't even been filmed yet. These letters came, and they kept coming and coming. It was just your worst nightmare. When corporations such as Disney sponsor Ellen, they are caving in to the 1% of the American population who call themselves homosexuals. Everyone knew they were taking a big risk. Many were terrified about what it could mean for their careers, or worse. As her brother, one of my first uh, reactions was for her safety. I immediately got my phone number enlisted. You know, I thought, there are crazy people out there who knew if I was, you know, partially responsible for this script would just as soon kill me as see this script on the air. Sure enough, as conservative outrage continued to build, production had to be stopped at one point. They 
ran everybody out of the studio because it was a bomb threat. Fortunately, the bomb threat was just a hoax, but it highlighted the importance of security around the episode. We all had to wear these wristbands to get onto the stage, which we never had to do during you know the regular rehearsal week before. The security was so high. Finally, in March of 97, they shot the puppy episode. After waiting all that time, it was a cathartic experience for Ellen. The most difficult scene to rehearse was when, when Ellen said that she was gay because literally every time we rehearsed that, she burst into tears. Just I could feel in her body this need to just let something go that had been in her for years. But at last, the episode was taped. Now it was time to get ready for broadcast. ABC was clearly still nervous. Network promos didn't even say what the episode was about. They would only call it. Ellen, the episode, a special hour Wednesday at 9, 8 central on ABC. And a bunch of sponsors dropped out ahead of the air date. Wendy's, JCPenney, and Chrysler. First of all, Chrysler sells Jeeps. I don't know if you know how many gay people drive Jeeps. But queer viewers were super excited and planned watch parties in homes and bars around the country. Both GLAAD and the Human Rights Campaign created watch party kits with games and trivia, and HRC expected to mail out 300. They wound up sending 3,000. And when one ABC affiliate in Alabama refused to carry the episode, local organizers there rented an auditorium with a satellite feed. 2,000 people showed up to watch. And when a news crew from that very same ABC affiliate came to cover the screening, they were, according to some accounts, booed, and according to others, chased away. And then, finally, on April 30th, 1997, 9 p.m., the episode began. Ellen, are you coming out or not? <laughs> yeah, Ellen, quit jerking us around and come out already! What is the big deal? I've got a whole hour. It starts with Ellen making a new friend. Her name is Susan, and she's visiting town for just a few days. She and Ellen immediately get along great. You've got a little eyelash right oh. here. You can make a wish. Okay. Would you like some coffee? That was it. That's amazing. <laughs> but then things get awkward when Susan mentions that she's gay and that she thought Ellen was too. Ellen panics. You know, it's not enough for you to be gay. You know, you've got to recruit others, you know. <laughs> hey, I'll have to call national headquarters and tell them I lost you. <laughs> Damn, just one more and I would have gotten that toaster oven. <laughs> What, what is that, gay humor? Because <laughs> I don't get it. Clearly the experience leaves her shaken, because the next day in therapy, she talks about how she's never clicked with past boyfriends. Has there ever been anyone you felt you clicked with? And what was his name? Susan. <laughs> Not long after, Ellen finds out that Susan has to cut short her visit to town, so Ellen rushes to the airport to catch her, and struggles to find the words to express herself. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I did get the joke about the toaster oven. She wants to say more, but it's hard. It's an emotional performance, and knowing how meaningful coming out was for Ellen, it seems like it's not just the character talking, it's also her. I can't even say the word. Why can't I say the word? I mean, why can't I just say... I mean, what is wrong? That why, why do I have to be so ashamed? And then, finally... Susan, I'm gay. <laughs> It's hard to convey just how huge this moment was. The audience went insane. I mean, it was two minutes or three minutes of them screaming. I still remember where I was when I saw this episode air. I was a closeted teen. I wanted desperately to come out, but I was scared to do it. I was home alone that night, watching with my heart pounding. And when I heard her say those words, I literally jumped out of my chair. It was the first time I'd ever seen someone do what I so wanted to do myself. And within a few months, I was out to everybody. That felt so great. From there, Ellen tries to figure out who else to tell. At first, she keeps it to herself and starts having weird gay dreams. Her therapist makes an observation that might also be a little meta joke about how long it took ABC to approve the episode. If you keep this to yourself, you're just gonna continue to have these dreams. And then it's gonna start showing up in your waking life as these little clues that get more and more obvious and eventually tiresome. <laughs> But there's also some more serious dialogue about what Ellen wants. A house with a picket fence, you know, a dog, a cat, Sunday barbecues, someone to love, someone who loves me. It's a surprisingly touching moment between all the jokes. A moment for the character to say that she just wants to be loved. And that she's afraid that people will think something about her is wrong, unlovable. It's as close as Ellen the character and Ellen the real person had ever been. Just like in real life, the character's scared to tell people she's gay, but eventually she works up the nerve. You know what you need? A melon baller. I'm gay. 
<laughs> so, where would I find one of those melon ballers? Oh, Ellen, at the grocery store, at the grocery store. I'm so proud of you. Turns out, all of Ellen's friends are pretty supportive. Well, I, for one, think it's super. <laughs> they promise to stand by her. And the episode ends with a little callback to Susan's joke. And so I'm right there. I didn't know it was so complicated. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Susan. There's your toast oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Overall, it was a huge night. Not just making history, but getting massive ratings. Well, I heard 42 million people watch. Yeah. So why was this such a big deal? After all, it wasn't the first gay character on TV. There have been plenty of gay side characters, and occasionally even a few recurring guests. But what made this different was that it was a gay lead character, the one that the show was named for, and that it was played by a person who was openly gay in real life. That was the taboo that Ellen had broken, beaming a likable queer character into tens of millions of American homes, showing viewers that gays aren't scary or scandalous, just regular folks who want to be loved and also showing people who might feel unlovable, like Ellen once did, that they too might find the strength to come out and find people who love them back. But after that triumph, the controversy still wasn't over, and neither was Ellen's battle with ABC. Ever since she first planned her coming out, she'd wanted to end the series with season four, as she saw it going out on top. And beyond that, the months-long back and forth over the episode was emotionally draining. One of her friends told TV Guide, she hates ABC. She's done with them. But ABC had other ideas. They saw the huge ratings and renewed the show for a fifth season. Ellen's contract forced her to come back, whether she wanted to or not. But over that summer, something unexpected happened. She started to get a flood of letters from people for whom her show had made a big difference. I would just like to thank you again for giving me the courage to be true to myself and letting me realize that I'm not a nasty, sick person. I pride in myself that I have found from watching you it's so wonderful to feel for the first time in my life. So if she was stuck with another season, they might as well make it count. Use the show to help more people feel proud about who they were. I think I started going through a transformation about what was important and realizing what's wrong if the show is focused on being gay. And so if by standing up for what I think is right makes me an activist, I'm an activist. At first, it seemed like season five would be strong. In September 1997, just a week before the season premiere, the show won an Emmy for the puppy episode. I uh, accept this on the behalf of all of the people and the teenagers, especially out there, who think there's something wrong with them because they're gay, they're gay and there's nothing wrong with you. Don't ever let anybody make you feel ashamed of who you are. And if the show didn't have a point of view before, it sure did now. Almost every episode dealt with some aspect of gay life. Now, viewers saw Ellen going on her first date with a woman learning gay slang, hiring a gay plumber. It was Peter's friend, it's no big deal, and besides, a plumber is a plumber. <laughs> it was like a little queer film festival every week. But things soon started going wrong. One episode featured the Ellen character having her first same-sex kiss. On the night of the broadcast, ABC put this at the start of the episode. This program contains adult content. Parental discretion is advised. When she saw that, Ellen was furious. She called Bob Iger, the head of ABC, and demanded an explanation. Here he is. Depicting characters who are gay on television in uh, physical acts, I believe, is adult content. To be clear, the only physical act in Ellen's episode was a pretty brief kiss between two fully clothed characters. For comparison, here's what was happening on other shows on ABC. That was incredible. Mm, I know. And ABC head Bob Iger even acknowledged. I think in the spirit of absolute honesty, I'd have to suggest that to some extent there is somewhat of a double standard here. But he said the warning about Ellen would stay. And we're making a judgment about what our society is comfortable with and what they might not be comfortable with. For Ellen, that was extremely painful. It just felt so degrading. It's, you know, it's my life. It's, it's, it's how I live my life. I love someone, and because of who I choose to love, I get a warning label. And things got worse. ABC started adding a warning to promos for the show. That is, when they'd promote it at all. Many of the network ads barely mentioned the show's existence. Plus Ellen, ABC Wednesday. Meanwhile, ratings started to drop. 
Ellen felt that it was because they stopped promoting the show. But network executives blamed the ratings decline on the show becoming too gay. It became a program about a lead character who was gay every single week. And I just think that was too much for people. Well, she is gay every single week, though. And then, in the spring, ABC decided to cancel the show. And no one even told me it was canceled. I, my assistant told me he read it in the trades. After she got the news, Ellen delivered a speech to the crew. Uh -huh. I can't thank you all enough. The fact that you've supported me through all of this means a whole lot to me. For her, it wasn't just the show that was ending. Because it had become so much about her own life, it felt like she personally had been rejected. And ABC executives seemed to confirm that. They maintained the cancellation was all her fault. I, I refuse to take the blame, and I don't believe ABC or Disney should take the blame. Just after the cancellation, Ellen won a Peabody Award. And you can see her trying to focus on having done some good. This really has been a, uh, a tough year for me, and uh, all that will fade away. It'll, it'll all go away, and, and this moment will remain with me always. And also trying to keep the mood light with some jokes. This is kind of embarrassing, but I guess I should just say it now. I'm not really gay. I, I thought... <laughs> What a hoot this would be, you know, if I could pull this off. But in other interviews, it's clear the experience was very painful. I was five years of my life, and I love doing it. And I'm gonna miss the show a lot. Ellen had always been a super private person. Now, she'd been through an excruciating process of opening up to the world, and she'd essentially been told the world didn't want her. After the sitcom ended, she tried to develop a new show, this time at CBS. The plan was for it to be a variety show, kind of like the Carol Burnett show meets Larry Sanders. They even went so far as to shoot a pilot, but ultimately Ellen decided to pull the plug. We don't have time for that whole story here, but I'll be posting a video over on Patreon with more details about just what the Ellen variety show is gonna be and why she decided to cancel it. That's at patreon.com slash mattbaum. Pretty quickly, Ellen found that work had almost totally dried up for her. I did feel rejected. I felt like people didn't like me anymore. The consensus in the industry was that Ellen personally was broadcast poison. Despite her fame, despite winning an Emmy and a Peabody, despite being the star of a Disney ride, it seemed like the end of her career. I worked for 20 years to get to where I was and suddenly just by revealing that one thing that I was scared to reveal, everything was wiped out and for three years really nothing was going on. As Ellen struggled to find work, it seemed like there might finally be a little good news. A documentary crew started following her and her girlfriend, Anne Heche, making a film about their lives. It seemed like this might be an opportunity for her to get back in front of audiences and show them she's still fun, likable. But then, one day in August, Anne dropped a bombshell. She announced she was leaving Ellen to pursue a relationship with one of the camera guys from the documentary crew. Ellen was totally blindsided. She later said she was heartbroken and went into a deep depression. She'd sit at home, staring at nothing, doing nothing. After the triumph of coming out, now, just a year and a bit later, she was out of work, rejected by audiences, left by the person she thought she'd spend the rest of her life with. I moved out of Los Angeles and I went to Ojai just to get out of uh, LA. And I was just kind of, you know, by myself and, and um, running out of money because I didn't have a piece of the show. And then two things happened that helped her turn her life around. The first was that, unbeknownst to Ellen, a director at Pixar named Andrew Stanton was looking for someone to voice a forgetful fish in a movie that they just started working on. He happened to catch a rerun of Ellen's sitcom and heard how she could jump from topic to topic to topic within a single sentence, and he felt that she was perfect for the role of Dory. He reached out to her about casting her in the movie, much to Ellen's shock. I hadn't worked in three years. I was thrilled that someone <laughs> called me for anything. I was about to work at the Olive Garden. Was like... She wasn't sure at the time if this role would go anywhere, but it was a sign that maybe people did want what she had to offer. I suffer from short-term memory loss. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Another thing happened one day when she was sitting at home watching a nature documentary. It was about baby animals and how they face countless dangers in the wild and other animals that just want to eat them. But despite all that, the baby animals in the documentary just kept going, kept fighting to survive in the face of constant threats. In a later interview, Ellen described what was going through her head as she watched. Quote, this is very much like show business. There's so many ways to get you. People say you're no good, but you just gotta keep walking. You gotta get past the crocodiles. So as hard as it was, she started pushing herself to get back up and try again. She went back to CBS and started working on a new sitcom that she hoped would be a shot at a comeback. There, she connected with some talented creators, 
Mitch Hurwitz, who'd go on to create Arrested Development, and lesbian comic Carol Liefer, who is the real-life inspiration for Elaine on Seinfeld. On the new show, Ellen would play a dot-com owner whose company goes out of business, so she moves back to her small Midwest hometown. My business collapsed. Well, thank your lucky stars you weren't there at the time. <laughs> they shot a pilot, it went well, and the show went to air in 2001. Ellen's back in The Ellen Show, coming to CBS Friday. The episodes are mostly about how Ellen's character, who's also a lesbian named Ellen, had been humiliated by a highly public failure. Guess the rat race of L.A. didn't work out, huh? Sorry about the relationship. <laughs> and now has to learn how to be accepted by mainstream small-town Americans. I'm basically, I'm just like you. I mean, sure, I'm richer, I'm wealthier, and I have more money. <laughs> From the start, the ratings were not great. Isn't this nice? All of us together, eating, talking? Sure hope we're not missing Judge Judy. <laughs> To try to give it a boost, CBS arranged for Ellen to host the Emmys that year, which were scheduled for mid-September of 2001. Of course, nobody could have predicted what was about to happen. I believe the title was Bin Laden Determined to Attack Inside the United States. What was supposed to be a fun, lighthearted evening was suddenly overshadowed by 9-11. With the country in mourning, the Emmys were postponed several times. And then, finally, a pared-down ceremony went ahead in November. Going in, Ellen felt like she was in an impossible position. The show opened with the national anthem, and watching the monitors backstage, Ellen could see the audience openly weeping. Her only hope, she later said, was that she could somehow give people a break from their grief. Here's how she began. I'm in a unique position as host, because think about it. What would bug the Taliban more than seeing a gay woman in a suit surrounded by Jews? <laughs> and as she went on, the mood seemed to lighten. They can't take away our creativity, our striving for excellence, our joy, only network executives can do that. <laughs> As host, Ellen managed to carefully thread the needle all night long, to be respectful while also providing a little relief in a very dark time. And as she concluded the show, here's how the audience responded. And I'd like to say that I had a, a, a great time hosting the show. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself. A standing ovation. She was shocked. When she saw everyone standing up, she later said, she thought it was because Barbara Streisand had walked out on stage behind her. The next day, the consensus was that her gentle humor had helped the audience feel a little better, something that was sorely needed. And it got her thinking about what might come next. And she wasn't alone. An executive at Warner Brothers reached out to suggest a role that might suit her talents. Not playing a character, but talking to an audience as her real, authentic self. I love talking to people. That's why I'm a comedian. Gradually, a show came together filmed on the very same lot where she had her big break on Carson. After a very trying phase in her life, she's trying a new gig as a talk show host. From the start, it seemed like a good fit for her kind of comedy. I'll be here every single day, and I'm hoping you also will commit yourself to, to being here every day. And if, if, if you're not, or if you're going to be late, please call me. She didn't avoid talking about being gay. It was just a part of her life. No big deal. I don't even know what it means to celebrate my lesbianism. I mean... Well, I guess I do. It's like that. <laughs> there. Okay. And she even used the show to continue delivering supportive messages. Attention, youth of the world. <laughs> I want you to live your lives being exactly who you are. While also attracting a mainstream audience with celebrity interviews, comedy, games, and dancing. And after being written off by the industry and thought of as entertainment poison, the show was an immediate hit. In its first season, it won an Emmy for Outstanding Talk Show. About a year ago, Jim Peritori was trying to convince station managers that people still wanted to see me on television. I can't believe I'm even here. I didn't think this was even possible to, to be invited back to this. And that same year, the Pixar film came out, Finding Nemo. Ellen won rave reviews and multiple awards for her performance as Dory. You are... And unlike her previous award wins, which happened as her sitcom was on a sharp decline, these signaled the start of a huge rise. Her talk show quickly became one of the most widely watched daytime shows in the country, winning Emmys year after year after year. How many of those do you have? I don't know. 61 Emmys in total, including 11 for Best Talk Show, beating Oprah's record. And it wasn't long into the show's run that Ellen was at a photo shoot and happened to bump into the actress Portia de Rossi. I saw her from across the room and she turned around and it was like an arrow went through my heart. Portia was closeted at the time. But I just got to a point where I just chose love over anything else. And I just thought, this is something I need to do, just be true to myself. 
The two married in 2008, and they're still together. And I know it's corny to say, yeah. but this is my soulmate, and, and you it know. It felt like destiny. After a rough couple of years, Ellen now found herself with a hit show, a happy relationship, and love of millions of viewers, without having to hide who she was. In 2016, Barack Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom and expressed why her work was so significant. To risk your career like that, people don't do that very often. And she did pay a price. We don't remember this. I hadn't remembered it. Ellen counters what too often divides us with the countless things that bind us together. Now, it wasn't all smooth sailing. In recent years, people who worked on the talk show came forward to talk about stressful working conditions, that Ellen was a particularly demanding boss, and that the production company failed to address allegations of sexual misconduct, not by Ellen, but by some of the men who worked on the show. Ellen addressed the situation on the show. I take that very seriously, and I want to say I am so sorry to the people who were affected. And unlike the ABC executives, who'd refused to accept responsibility for what happened with her sitcom, I know that I'm in a position of privilege and power, and I realize that with that comes responsibility, and I take responsibility for what happens at my show. I am a boss of 270 people. All I want is for every single one of them to be happy and to be proud to work here. Along with her public apology, she also apologized to the crew, worked with Warner Brothers on an internal investigation, fired the three executives accused of misconduct, and set up new diversity and inclusion programs. And ultimately, she said, she wanted to focus on the good that she could do. I got into this business to make people laugh and feel good. That's, that's my favorite thing to do, that and Jenga. <laughs> so my hope is that we can still be a place of happiness and joy. I still want to be the one hour a day that people can go to escape and laugh. So it's a complex legacy. And at times, Ellen herself has admitted, She's made mistakes. But it's not an exaggeration to say she's had an enormous impact on television and on people's lives. Not just with the coming out, but over the two-decade run of her talk show, which every day of the week beamed a happy, friendly queer person into millions of homes, living a truthful, authentic life. It was a journey that had a profound impact on America, from the most tumultuous days of her career. I grew up wanting to be somebody, and then I all of a sudden <sighs> found out that I wanted to be somebody happy. To where she finally is today. To actually be proud of myself, that I, that I took chances and started gaining confidence in myself instead of being so insecure, it's like I can't believe that I got here from mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I'm, that makes me really happy. Now, there's a lot more to say about Ellen that I didn't have time to go into here, like the time Lisa Kudrow was doing some genealogical research and made a surprising discovery about Ellen's family. Let's start off with uh, your relationship to Madonna. And the story of how Ellen nearly got bumped from The Tonight Show due to a mix-up involving a song from Cats. Plus, whatever happened to that Ellen robot? Is this real? <laughs> I'll be posting those stories and bonus videos over on Patreon. And if you like pop culture history, check out my new book about the history of queer characters on American sitcoms. It's called Hi Honey, I'm Homo. It comes out on May 23rd, 2023. And I'll be doing a book tour to a bunch of cities to coincide with the release. You can get a copy of the book and details about where you can see me live at GaySitcoms.com. Big thanks to all the patrons who make these videos possible. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've been invited to a toga party at Ellen's. The last time I wore a toga was at a party at Barbara Walters' house, by the way. <laughs>